it depends as well as to what someone has been brought up in you know mm-hmm. how things have unfolded within their own mental state if you've been brought up in an environment where ignorance was as, was as bliss as anything and it was taught to you to remain ignorant to the world and to focus solely on family and that's it if you have certain values that have been implemented there are so many factors that come into the reality of why human beings show up the way they do welcome 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 back you guys to the daily humans podcast i'm nina i'm ashley and welcome back in to the best club in the world is our club and before we start um ashley is stunning i mean you have you have eyes right you have vision and if you do i just want you to know that like look at her like she's she's emanating the highest realms of beauty that can ever be acquired by a a human you're above Beyonce. You're you're above everybody. Like what everybody mm-hmm. idolizes, you're way above that. Like your beauty is stunning. Look at her, her outfit, her hair, her beauty, her grace. She is the moment. She is she is the light. She is the truth. Welcome. Welcome to the show, Ashley. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna buy you another present now. <laughs> Honestly, I never get tired of her um, every time, every single time. Ashley, you're just ravishing. You're just, and I'm like, Nina, honestly, at this point, um, I need to give you a f- award. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, though. Best, best f- human being on this planet. Thank you. Thank you. We need Sorry, more Ninas. Yeah. Watch out for our merch. <laughs> all the ninas how to be oh my gosh we did say that in an episode once mm-hmm. i did yeah a nina yeah. t-shirt with how to be nina how to get a nina how to be a nina yes mm. yeah how to be Nina. <laughs> but you are beautiful actually before we uh got started on recording today i had Ashley had given me a surprise present a couple weeks ago that ended up lifting my spirit so much. And um, I have been plotting ever since trying to get her another present as well. And she's like, you don't need to give me anything. It's fine. And I'm like, I'm going to get you something. You can yeah, stop me. <laughs> you know? This is our back and forth. We just go back and forth all the time. She'll be like, I'm going to get you a present. I'm like, no, you don't have to give me anything. And then I will get her a present. And she's like, no. And I'm like, yes. And then I say it. And it just keeps happening. We just keep cycling yeah. through it. Yeah. But it's- in my perception that I would love to put out there, um, since she is literally one of the most flower blooming, sun shining, water trickling, amazing human being on this planet, like I could shower her with her entire <laughs> Amazon wish list. Like, <laughs> I am determined. She has a wish list and we gave it to each other. I'm determined to buy it all. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to finish your wish list for you. Your wish is my command. Oh my gosh, you're you're amazing. Yeah, but um, you don't need to do that. Like, like you have said to me. Um, yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> no, but yesterday I was in just in a really good mood, and I finally figured it out. It just snapped into my head, and it was supposed to be delivered today, but it didn't. I was actually really hoping that it would arrive because I was like, hopefully it can make like her day, Ashley's day, because she needs to be reminded of how much of of sunshine she is. And um, it did not arrive, unfortunately, but I will say this, and this is something you can think back on this moment, Ashley, when you do receive it. This is something I've wanted to do for somebody for a very long time. And so I am excited i'm so looking forward to her face and her crying even if you don't cry it's fine um oh, I, but I'll i just cry. i i am very excited 
that's all. That's the intro. <laughs> I'm not crying now. I just have watery eyes. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm so curious what you got. I, it's, the curiosity of me is eating away. I need to know what it is. I'm actually surprised you haven't tried to guess it yet. I was like, today she asks, like way before we even got online, I was like, no, I, I'm not going to let you know. I'm not going to let you know. No, nope. But it is something I'm genuine. It's like a life, life event for me personally to have been able to do this for somebody. And so this is not about me and this is absolutely not about me, but I just feel so incredibly grateful to have been able to do this. So this Today is the day of change, Ashley, because you have sprung forth from your friendship and beauty, uh, uh, incredible, incredibleness, incredible love and, and just happiness for the whole entire world. And I'm just very excited for you to get what is coming. We'll say, we'll keep you updated. Me. We'll keep you updated. Maybe we'll post a story or something when Ashley gets it. So yeah. I just, I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> gift from the universe <laughs> gift oh gift from the motherfucking universe yeah yes you are oh my gosh i'm like anticipated now the part of me is like let it be delivered right now i need to see what it is i need to yeah hmm. thank you but how are you doing how are you doing ashley you stunning beautiful woman Thanks to you, I'm on Claire Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody could ever, you know what? Nina builds up so much of this space that I feel like no one could ever enforce themselves into it and, and change that momentum going. And I think that's just like the most purest thing is having a friend that just builds, helps you build up your self space so much your self space is that even a f thing yeah, I'm helps sure it you is. <laughs> sure it is in ashley's dictionary <laughs> that helps um you know helps your friend build up their space so much that the outside noise in the outside world could never invade it <laughs> so yeah. just, like, different words you can read that and try to take that away from you and i've said it in an episode before that friends people in general can really offer that assistance in building up your inner space of protection and compassion and empathy and love for self and nina has been helping me build that for since we met really since we met so i totally have no issues in ever, ever, ever <laughs> fulfilling your wish list. <laughs> fulfilling your wish list, not just from Amazon either. <laughs> oh, other pages too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Honey, if I could buy you a mother house, I would. If I could buy you a Same. plane ticket out yeah. of Germany, I would. <laughs> Same. Yeah. I think I thought about that yesterday as well, because you did mention it um, a few times to me in private as well, where it's just the amount of love that I have received in my life was who I am today was raised up upon the love that I received from you and from a handful of other friends. And just it is so vital in my self growth as well and how much you have contributed to my life and i think i said this last time when ashley gave me the present when i received it i was like oh my gosh somebody just surprised me with with a gift i've always wanted to experience that that's so sweet and it's it's i'm just so grateful to have your friendship and to be in the circle where I am able to give and make you feel comfortable, make you feel happier, make you feel safe in who you are. And I know everybody listening, oh my God, you guys, take it, take it out, take it to a different room. Like, oh, they're always all over each other. <laughs> but Get it's used to it. <laughs> it's the truth. Ashley Get is amazing. She's beautiful. It. She's stunning. Okay. We need a whole channel. I am petitioning this right now. 
we need a whole channel where the whole entire video is just actually looking into the camera and we can just admire her beauty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all I have to say is you, you're all gonna have to get used to it if you're gonna join us on the ride you gotta get used to it because she's my soulmate and um there's so much love to go around and I mean <laughs> I'm still learning how to give that love the way that she does but essentially building building helping you know she assists me so friends love and light but you're gonna have to get used to it yeah yeah because we're not apologizing for it (laughs) yep sorry not sorry oh yeah and it's just I'm very grateful I'm very at peace these days in my life because of our friendship and um speaking on that I Ashley and I have been sitting and we've been talking and we've been reeling from life ever since birth, you know, like, I mean, we're here. We, we, we started this podcast. So. Ever since birth, that is a real one. That's it. <laughs> Going through it ever since birth. Yeah. <laughs> Were you an easy baby? Did you come out swiftly? Oh, <laughs> Struggling no, since no. birth. Yeah. I did not want to be present. No, but um, this podcast in and of itself has been such a healing time for me and being able to record with you and spend time with you and share so much time and space and communication with each other. It's it's revolutionized my life. And because it is such a big comfort, I do just want to go ahead and say that this podcast um at least for me, I can only speak from my behalf, is something that I want to contribute or give to anybody who's listening as a form of joy, as a form of comfort. I would love for everybody who listens to feel at ease, like they're hanging out with their two best friends or, you know, just listening, even if it's just on TikTok or whatever, if you feel comforted or guided in any way from anything that we say, I feel like that is the biggest gift that for me personally, I could give. And um, thank you for being on this journey with us. It's been healing for me and I hope we can continue to heal more of the world with our randomness and chaos and and fun times and deep talks. (laughs) But with that, um, I also want to, no, we also wanted to go ahead and because the, the we always talk about spirituality. That's kind of like the central for everything almost. And because of that, we also think it is very important to talk about mental health, which we've covered in previous conversations and episodes as well, but especially during these days, during these times and where so much is up in the air and it can feel like the world is kind of spinning on its axis. Um, we wanted to bring this episode to you guys in terms of mental health and how to take care of yourself in the midst of massive transformation in the world. And I hope that wherever you are, wherever you're listening in from, and whoever you are, that this can provide a sort of support and safeguard and kind of remind you, oh, yeah, I'm a human being too, and I have needs, and it's okay to pour into myself. So yeah, welcome. Come on in. <laughs> um, you could definitely speak for me in that as well. I 100% advocate for that too. So I'm with that as well. Yeah. yeah. Safe space for all. Yes. Love and light to all. <laughs> Animals, humans, plants, fish, because I've got fish. So she's a part of the equation too. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. I could just play our podcast and hold it up to the fish tank. <laughs> Look. Look, son. I've named her son. Her name is Sun. Because she literally is like the sun. Oh my god. I've named her son. Yeah, my little fishy. There's only one left in the tank. And let me preference this, friends. There's only one left because all the others have passed and she's quite happy being by herself. And mm. once she decides to depart when her time when she's ready that will no longer be having a fish tank. So that's why I haven't brought any. But I should I should just hold the podcast up so she can hear our podcast going. I'll be like, this is yeah. for you too. 
true. <laughs> this is you as well. You're a part of this planet. <laughs> I love that actually, because your um your dogs are exactly the same. It's like <laughs> Oscar and uh, Myla and um I'm forgetting her name. His name, Oscar, Myla, and Pluto. Yes, Pluto. How can I forget Pluto? A cutie little Pluto. Okay. <laughs> no, Myla loves her space. Every time Ashley lets me see her, um, which is often, thankfully, um, she's always like at the end of the day when the boys are in her bed, in her area, she's like, I kind of want to be by myself and I'm loving that sun is the same. She's like, I love this. This is my space. This is for yeah. me. And I feel like this is what you're creating in your own life right now as well. Like, this is my space. This is what I want. This is where I need to be. Like, I love that. Oh, yeah. It's like manifesting itself through so many different avenues. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Um, yes. All the plants and the pets that I have, they're kind mm -hmm. of like in one connection of just serenity yes. to me, even though my dogs just casually, you know, have their moments of ripping up pee mats and ripping up all their toys. And oh my gosh, I have to tell you all, one of my dogs, she brought, um, my mom gave children's toys to them and it was, mm -hmm. They loved them. They really did. Mm -hmm. So Myla decided to come to my room one day and she brought me the hand of one of them. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, Poppy, are you the mass murderer? Did she look it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm looking at her thinking, you brought me the hand. That's so sweet. But in my mind, I'm like, my dogs are murderers, man. They're murderers. I walk into the lounge room. And poor Mickey is missing legs, arms, his stuffings on the inside is out. I'm like, you didn't just murder him. You tore him apart. And then now you're just casually, Pluto was playing with his body. And I thought, <laughs> what did I do? What did I just bring into this home? Like, it's funny, but it's also like terrifying when they bring me legs and feet and they're like, mom, here for you. Here is the leg. She was like, like let me give you a hand. <laughs> yeah. Did you just drop the hand in front of me? And I'm looking like, yes. I recorded an Instagram video because I just had to. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, you're you're so sweet to give me Mickey's hand. I'm going to go and um, put it in a frame. Yeah. Myla's doing. It's so funny because Momo never tears up any of her toys like ever she'll sometimes like remove oh no she has on accident though that was on accident um <laughs> she like removed it. she she cut open the neck with her sharp teeth um of a toy that ashley had sent her for christmas it was like a little llama she loves the llama and um she does not part from it and she just recently ashley sent uh, a puppy uh, that is super soft and Momo is obsessed. But aside from that, Momo has never really torn apart any toy. Which is a sweet baby angel. Yes. Sweet baby <laughs> angel. Nina sent a photo once of Momo. Momo had come around the corner and she's just staring straight at Nina. <laughs> and Nina and they sent me the photo and I'm like, Nina, she looks like she's seriously judging. <laughs> she's so judging. She's a um, sassy. She's a sassy one, that one. Yeah, she is. So cute. Nina's dog is cute. Nina's dog is Momo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you don't know who Momo is, that's that's my dog. Yeah, she's adorable. And so are yours. Myla, Pluto, and Oscar. And adorable. Oh, so All of them together. Oh, so cute. Yes. I know they probably I... wouldn't stay together because Momo would probably be like, uh, no, too many of you. Myla would 100% be like, I am absolutely going to rage. There's too many of you. Um, Pluto would love it. He'd attack all of them. And Oscar is kind of like Grandpa. I call him Grandpa Lou. Grandpa Lou Lou. That's what I call him. He would just scruffle along. Uh, okay. Mama would love him. Would she loves uh, calm dogs. She loves yeah, calm dogs. Calm. Yeah. Not in the morning these days, which I'm not complaining because I'm very grateful since 
his health took a turn in April. So I'm mm-hmm. not complaining. But in the morning, yeah. he does this thing now where he scruffles the bed and then he flips his body over. But this is the thing, my friends. He doesn't do it on his side. He does it on my head. So he'll flip his body and smack himself on my head. And then he'll go and do it to Pluto. He'll roll off and smack his body That's on so Pluto interesting. to wake us up. And then he just he just stares at me. Body slam. Yeah. <laughs> WWE style. <laughs> and some day, some morning, it's six in the morning, and I'm looking at him being like, I thought you were Grandpa Lou. Oh, wait, that's what they want at 6 a.m., bro. And he'll want to go outside. And, look, I'm not complaining, but there are some moments where I will wake from him smacking me in the face. And you know when you wake up from something that is just that has jolted your entire system? Yeah. And I don't want his butt in my face. I love him, but I don't want his butt in my face. You've got booty slammed. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm glad he's so excited to get up and start his day, but... I would rather him like scratch at the bed like they do, but instead it's like WWE ass in face. I love that. That is the best thing I've heard in a long time. I hope, you know what? It's hard to record it because obviously I'm half asleep. asleep. Yeah. But I, I so wish I could record it and send it to yeah. you. Hopefully one day, uh, you know what I'll do? I'll just catch him doing it and then I'll send that to you and show you mm-hmm. this is what he does. So imagine yeah. my face copying that. Yeah. <laughs> Something uh-huh. I just thought of. You know how like um, cows like tip over? It's like Oscar just scrambles and then he just goes, he just like tips over. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. yeah. Pets, plants. I, I say this all the time with Ashley in her room. Her room looks so peaceful. And I think it's so important for us to have that kind of peace, to have joy in things, to yes. find joy in things in our lives. Yep. Because, oh my gosh, we've talked about it a little bit before, I believe. It's it's a little bit hard to remember everything. But if I may repeat myself, um, having spiritual awakenings is hard. It's very hard. And everything that comes with it, even harder. So I feel like that's what's currently going on in the world right now. We have a lot of people awakening to the reality and realizing that, you know, the things that we've been taught before aren't really applicable to our lives or any human life or any life in general. And so um, having that awakening is rough. And then with protests going on, with activism going on with so many causes currently needing our attention and help it can sometimes feel at least i can speak for myself you can get burned out really 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 quick to the point where it's like oh my gosh i'm getting fatigue i don't know what to do and that can lead into a lot of different avenues um hopelessness thoughts that things will never change you know what about me blah 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 it can it can dwell into so many things and so Ash and I have been talking, we've been talking uh, to other people as well. And it's just, it's been a consensus of just, I am tired and I don't know what to do because I don't want it to seem like I'm not participating if I'm tired or if I just need a mental health break. And it is so vital, like I said, at, at the top of the episode that we take care of our minds because if we're not okay, we can never contribute to a better society. Actually, this has come up quite a bit recently where it's like people don't really understand how how powerful it is to have to have a healthy mental well-being. I think people are just really coming to the fruition of that. And then there's the opposite side who's not really who is resistant to acknowledging it. But taking care of your mental health is a revolutionary thing. I've said this to Ashley before as well. It is something that is so vital if you want anything good to happen in life, not just for yourself, but also for the world, because without you being okay, how can you ever make anything else okay? How can you pour into somebody else's cup? This goes back to the episode, the special guest episode we had with Jordy. Um, how, you need to pour into you until your cup overflows and then you can pour into somebody else with that which overflows. And so please 
remind yourself in the midst of any awakening that you may be going through. It's hard. It's not easy. We're on the right track though, even though it feels like sometimes things are going insane <laughs> and you have no clue and what's going on. <laughs> Just know yeah. you need to have things to ground yourself in. Um, mm. And uh, it's just, for me, that's been the podcast. For me, that's been spending time with you, Ash, talking with friends, cooking dinners when I do have the energy to do so, things like that, mm. that really kind of enable me to not only take care of myself in an emotional or like on a physical way, but also just finding peace amidst the chaos. You know what mm. I mean? Definitely. Yeah. I think it's a needed reminder. Um, yeah. Because I think the world is still figuring out what mental health actually is and the symbolism of it and the connections to it. And uh, even in these times, I think it's very easy to forget that we are human beings. We're not robots. So we can't function like we don't have mental health and physical health and emotional health and spiritual health. And I, I think people forget that very easily. Yeah. And in the points of advocacy turn to, you know, wanting people to get to a certain severe state of mind for that. Like, I think there's just, there's still a lot of unawareness around this topic. So what Nina said is really just the reality in that you only live with you. You're the one that, you know, <laughs> will experience life with just you and see life the way that you do and you feel what you feel and if you're especially going through mental health conditions you know what it's like and no one else does so it's imperative to make sure that the priority bananas in pajamas the prioritization is where it needs to be yeah. as well with everything that is happening you can be aware you can definitely be aware and you can be an advocate, but not at the cost of everything that is you and everything that is a part of you and your entire self. It just, I've done it before and uh, no one can actually come out of that but me. So no one else had to come out of it but myself. So I truly advocate for not setting yourself on fire, trying to save the world or trying to help the world. Not worth it. Only you have to wound up your wound up. Only you have to, oh, what's the word? Bandage. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Only you have to bandage up your wounds and your scars. No one else can. So, yeah. It's such an incredible, noble thing. You know, Ashley and I have been, especially Ashley, you've been advocating for such a long time now with various different causes and issues and speaking up and you wouldn't be able to maintain anything by constantly going, 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 going. I think I said this in the last episode as well, where it's like, you're not a human doing, you're a human being, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into esoterical stuff where it's like, you need to be the change you wish to see in the world, which you do, but, um, you can only get there. You can only maintain a healthy activism, a ha healthy protest, a healthy way of living, a healthy way of being, um, a healthy way of being a voice for people who don't have one. If you take time to take care of yourself and that is so vital and something that I, I I've been reading this book called love life by Matthew Hussey and it's it's essentially about your love life but it's also about finding love for your life and in your life uh, with yourself and there was this just revolutionary moment in this book and essentially what he had said in the book is that you yourself are a person I actually mentioned this oftentimes as well but in the fact that you are a person, we often don't treat ourselves as one. We look to other people and what they need and how we can give and how we can show up and give, 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 give. But when it comes to ourselves, we have the tendency of falling short in that. We don't really give ourselves the same respect, the same love, the same care as we would a friend, mm. typically speaking. And there was a 
a moment, I actually wrote it down where he talks about self-love and self-love is not a feeling. It is a verb. It is something that you do by taking care of yourself, encouraging yourself, nurturing yourself and standing up for yourself. And the question that he posed that I'm going to pass forward in this episode is how can you give yourself more of that? Because you are a human being, you are a person, and all the values of decency, kindness, respect, and compassion need to be applied to you, just as it needs to be extended to other people on this planet. And finding ways that you can create peace in your life. And I'm hearing this, like, voice in my head that's just like, well, how can I have hobbies when everything in the world seems to be going wrong? And it is even more important for you to have something that you can find joy in. I've said this like three times now, but it is. Whether that be watching movies, whether that be listening to music. Well, it's like, well, everybody's a bad person or it seems trivial when there's so much misery going on in the world. It's like, yes, but the only way we can stand tall, the only way we can keep fighting, the only way we can keep going, the only way not to lose courage or passion or drive is by partaking in the things that give us joy. If you want to cut out certain people, certain movies, certain music, certain whatever, that's completely up to you. And something you should definitely do if you don't feel like it matches with who you are. But don't think that there aren't things, places, people, movies, music, whatever, that can replace that and benefit you to your higher self. Ashley often talks about listening to Reiki, or um, meditative music that calms her down. That can be an option for anybody listening as well when they're like, well, I don't wanna listen to music, it's distracting. Not everything needs to be distracting. It's not the object, it's how you use it. It's not the means, it's how you use it. And Mm. um, I just, I had this conversation uh, within a group chat a little while ago where I was like, I really love this movie, but I don't know if I can buy it because I don't know if that contributes to something that I'm unaware of that could be bad for the world. And it took me a long time because I felt guilty for liking something and wanting something. And I am a huge movie lover. I think I've said this like way in the beginning of season one, and that is something that has always given me joy. However, it is disheartening um, to see people that I, in the movie industry, just did not act a certain way. And that goes for many different, in, into many different avenues, um, but not do the right thing, essentially. However, I feel like this goes into the slight topic of like distancing the art and the artist, which I'm not going to get into. But I feel like if you have something in this world that gives you joy, you are responsible Not just you can or you should, you are responsible for nurturing your happiness, for pouring into you. And it can be tough. I'm not going to lie. It can be tough when you see people miserable because there'll be days when I walk around and I'm like, I have water, I have a roof over my head. That's not something that a lot of people have. But am I going to be able to benefit a person who doesn't have that by making myself feel bad for having it? Or am I going to benefit a different person who doesn't have it by making some kind of improvement or adding something into my life in a way that I can give back to a person or a community or whatever? You know, it's not about making ourselves feel bad for what we have that lacks in another person's area or in another person's life. It's about making sure that we spread out what we have, that we give from what we have and not put ourselves down for having it. I hope that makes sense. I hope that that can provide a little bit of um, just like a base for anybody out there who is currently going through it. Um, It is so important to have something that you love that makes you happy, especially right now. And if that's evolving, then that's okay. It doesn't mean you have to get rid of everything, but it does mean consuming more consciously yeah i'm happy with that i'm happy with what i said (laughs) (laughs) Um, satisfaction on her face yeah 
it's rough sometimes, you know, because this is such a big topic. And you and I have gone through this. We've gone through our spiritual awakening so many times. We've been able to like progress through that initial stage of it. Mm. And then we struggle within the system that are that is still around and hopefully leaving. And it can be rough, but you and I, we have such a great friendship. And like you said as well, you have been a saint in my life. You've been a light in my life, Ashley. And that is something that, again, also just want to interject here real quick. If you, if it's not in things that you find joy, you can have that in your relationships and your friendships and your, in your people. If you have somebody that you can go to and talk to, that's also a method that you can find peace and self-help and, and mental well-being. Um, because that's literally what happens between you and I, Ash. Like I feel so much more at peace when I get to cry, when I get to be angry in voice messages, like, oh my God, you would not believe this. <laughs> it just that that is community that it's a part of yep. healing and it doesn't have Definitely. to be sunshine and rainbows you know but if we're together in it then i feel like something good can come of it yeah <laughs> i agree i agree you'll never be fully sunshine and rainbows and i want to preference that everything that we say is just guidance it's not mm -hmm. advice and it's your choice what you do with it whether you resonate with it or you don't that's up to you that's your responsibility yeah. that is not ours yeah. um so just to preference that too okay we're not saying that things are set in stone by what we say it's just you know our learning journeys our learning lessons our my studies and etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah just wanted to preference that too um and you know when i first started advocating around 17 i think it was right um back in that time i was incredibly a big severe <laughs> severe people pleaser mm. just absolutely lived for other people and i didn't know who i was and especially as i've said in other episodes having complex complex ptsd you don't really know who you are at all mm. your existence is for everyone else so when i started advocating um and i thought about the fact that i really have struggled being seen heard and validated in many different aspects of my life i took that as well as many other things that come from people pleasing and other traumas and i established it by exposing myself to the worst of the worst in the world and i just kept seeing that over and over and over again and i just kept exposing myself to it and then i crumbled and i just kept crumbling because i thought that if i keep doing this I will see here and validate everyone else at the extent of myself. And I was getting worse and worse and worse already than more than I already was because I didn't know how to boundary advocation. And I also was afraid. I was afraid that people would say that I'm not doing enough, that I'm not doing this, blah, blah, blah. Just afraid of the world because human beings are so quick to make it unsafe and they're very good at making it unsafe. And they're very good at attacking and they're very good at bullying. And they're very good at many things that dehumanize you as a human being, you know, very good at it. People are very good at it. So the fear that engulfed me and still kind of does at times too, really took over. So I thought that this was the way to go about it. Instead, um, it landed me in hospital and it also put me in very severe manic episodes as well of complex PTSD and I I couldn't get out of it for years I would just think about everything that was going wrong in the world and it was my I was consumed in the negativity of the world in the negativity of human beings and the capability that they have so I was afraid of the world I didn't know how to step out into these spaces I didn't know how to be in this in this world I really uh, as Someone that is still in a very complex state of mind when it comes to suicidality, when you are constantly surrounded by the negativities of your own life and the world, you don't see a purpose. So I was essentially not finding, I was essentially not in a place, no, how do I say it? Essentially the massive hole 
the crater that is created from this mindset, I had no way of getting out of that. And there was no possibility of getting out of that. When you are stuck in the space of there is no purpose, there is no life, there is no safety, there is nothing, I don't see the point of climbing out of that crater. Mm -hmm. I don't see the point. I'll just stay in there, Yeah. right? It took me some time to get to a point and realise that, one, not everyone is going to be happy with how you advocate not everyone is going to like you in your space. And that's still something that I'm working through is finding safety in that because I still feel incredibly unsafe with this world and the way that people are and the way that they go about things. It is difficult to trust when it's so easily people will jump on the train of, I want to end you. I want to literally ruin mm-hmm. your life. Kind yeah. of thing. And I've seen it on social media so many times. So I don't really trust a lot of the spaces of humanity, right? But at the same time, I had to learn that, again, you can't please people because one, one, no matter what, right, you're going to do one thing, someone's not going to like that one thing. You do another thing to satisfy that person, someone else isn't going to like it. There's always going to be something in this world. There's always going to be someone that doesn't like it. There's always, be, there's always going to be someone that wants to have a say about it. There will always be something, right? It's just really about humanity realizing how they conversate that. It's really about humanity taking accountability in that way and responsibility for how they go about things and learning how to boundary that because you have no idea who you're talking to and you have no idea what's unfolded in their life. You really don't. But that was one thing. But also the second thing is, like I said at the start, I, I will no longer set myself on fire to help assist the world in healing because I like helping people. And I feel really, what's the word? I feel this like gravity pull towards doing so. It gives me so much fulfillment to be able to hear, see and validate others and to be able to expand the awareness and and really just see people, you know. I love doing that. But essentially I'm not going to put myself anymore. I will never put myself or ever apologize for not putting myself in that situation because no one else has to get out of it but me. No one else has to find a way through it but me. And this was years that it took for me to get out of that, a long time. So that's taken up all of my life, including with dealing with other things as well. So it's, pay, it's taken up so much to come to this point of where I am now where it's like, you want me to set myself on fire? It's not happening. You choose what you want to choose because you're you're responsible for your own individual self. But for me, I know what happened and I know what unfolded when I went down that route, yeah. when I went down that route. I know what happened when I went down that route. And it honestly is just not anything I would ever, ever, ever advocate for anyone to do because what is the purpose at the end of the day? What do you think you're doing in terms of, you think you're advocating highly for all the things you want to, you're not, you're just really harming yourself in every way, shape and form truly, because you have to understand you're dealing with the mind that is incredibly powerful. If we only use 10% of it, imagine what the other 90% is. You don't know. Right. And it's already difficult for society to witness something like an episode, right? So your Mm -hmm. mind Imagine that your mind consistently in that space and then it becomes manic because essentially if it's not working through in a healing manner, it goes the other side, the other way, and it gets worse and worse and worse. Your psychology changes, you change, your physical health changes. I got really sick and I stayed sick consecutively. Every part of me changed because I wanted to help the world and also please it at the same time, which the pleasing is my responsibility. The whole thing is essentially, but the way that society goes about certain things and what they want people to do. No, no. Because like I said before, no one has to, no one else is going to pull you out of that, but you essentially people are a part of the journey to help you heal with guidance, right? That is a normality of the, and it should be a normality. But at the end of the day, you live with you. You exist in you. Only you see things the way that you do. Only you view the world the way that you do. Only you feel what you feel. Only you feel your heart and your lungs and your kidney. Only you feel all of that, the pain that you feel. Only you do, essentially. So whatever you choose, only you will feel it. Whatever decision that you make, only you will know that decision and feel that decision. 
So essentially, if you've got, if you've got complex mental health issues, and you put and you um, are in certain states or certain environments, or you've put yourself in those environments, and you feel like you have to because of other people, that's really the question that I always ask myself: is I'd rather them, I'd rather them project than me ever go through those episodes and that time frame ever again because their disdain and their dislike and their projective behavior is nothing compared to what this experience was like and I definitely put that out there to any of you that are in advocacy too or not even in advocacy but just the awareness model and feeling like that your awareness needs to expand beyond the boundary line is what I call it it doesn't you can be aware being aware is oh it's definitely important it's so important but at the same time like i said boundary it needs boundaries you're a human being you're not a you don't have freaking robotic parts inside you you're not functioning like that you're a human being mental health emotional health physical health spiritual health all that damn all that jam is a part of the equation and it's important to be made aware that yeah it's a priority to prioritize yourself, especially Absolutely. in these times. Especially, yeah. And as I was thinking, Ash, too, um, when you think about advocacy in general, no matter what it is, you can mm. see the worst of the worst in humanity. Oh, really, yeah. you can. Absolutely. Yep. You're confronted with it. And yep. there has been so much accumulation of that, of the evil, of the unjust of the just horrifying things that human do human beings can do to one another to constantly be out there advocating going 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 without ever stopping without ever putting like you said a boundary on it without ever like taking a step back and being like okay maybe i just need a break for a little bit that will also change so much of how your brain works and how it processes things. And when you're already in a place of struggling with mental health or you're dealing with things like CPTSD or PTSD or trauma or whatever it may be, it doesn't matter what it is, we need to keep in mind that even for a healthy person, a person who has no mental health issues at all, that would be too much to constantly mm -hmm be confronted with it every single day and then there are people yeah. like well people do it all the time yeah but are they okay and are they taking the steps that they need to make sure that they're okay mm. if they are great but if they are then you see that they too have a support system have something that they can go to or something they do or have a practice or a, a ritual of taking care of themselves because you cannot I love the way you put it, set yourself on fire for somebody else. You can't. There are people who do in protest, and I think that that is just beyond just determined. But in order, this is something that I say, and maybe not everybody agrees, but this is something that I, I truly deeply feel in my soul. The best way to overcome suppression is by surviving. Because the fact that you are alive, your existence, your being, your beauty, your grace is a protest against the evilness in this world. And you will never get anywhere, like I said prior, by putting it down if you're not aware or can consume everything at the level in which it is in existence or which it is brought to you whether that be social media or just being out there in the field doing things, you have to pace yourself. You will be consumed by the evil, by the darkness, if you don't take care of yourself. And that is how they win. Mm. And this goes for anything that you're advocating. So I think this world, like you have so perfectly stated from your own experience, Ash, um, it can get really passionate or really quiet and both sides are not healthy. There needs to be an equilibrium to it, you know? And mm -hmm. um, when you don't take care of your mental health, that's how things fall apart. That's how your movement falls apart. That's how you start turning in on one another when you're actually supposed to be with each other fighting for the same thing. And you need to have awareness that not everybody operates at the same capacity as you do. 
you have to be mindful about how you exude yourself. And if yeah. somebody can't do things, we, this literally goes with everything. If somebody can't operate on the level that you do, that does not mean that they are an issue or a problem. If there are issues, bring that up, have that conversation in a healthy way. But if not, if they're just not operating on the same level or as quick or as often or as ba 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 ba, then take a step back before you react and really evaluate yourself and how you're approaching things and people with what you're trying to bring across. Helping people is one of the best things ever. I, I have so much respect of all the activists and the protests and all these people out there changing lives every, every single day, but there are people also changing lives every single day in silence that don't speak out about it, that do it in a different way. Um, and that needs to be acknowledged, I think. So. Mm. Yeah. before we paint anybody a bad guy let's read the receipts <laughs> you know <laughs> oh 100 percent. i've i've done things in silence and yeah. i don't feel the need to announce it i'm not going to yeah. announce yeah a lot of the stuff has unfolded it just yes. if you don't need to you don't need to if you don't want to you don't want to yeah. but it is this conversation is also a part of the advocacy of mental health right. conditions as well but it also is valid to acknowledge those that don't have mental health conditions. You're dealing with a mind that you don't fully understand. So how they interpret the things that are happening in the world through their, this is the other thing I have to say this. <laughs> it depends as well as to what someone has been brought up in, you know, and how things have unfolded within their own mental state. If you've been brought up in an environment where ignorance was as, was as bliss as anything and it was taught to you to remain ignorant to the world and to focus solely on family and that's it. If you have certain values that have been implemented, there are so many factors that come into the reality of why human beings show up the way they do and do certain things the way they do. And if I'm, I'm literally putting aside mental health conditions in this topic, but if you have someone as well that has limiting beliefs or has their own um issues right and they don't know how to even go about them it is a thing that i think about is how do we expect them to really see the worlds we are a very unhealed society we're coming from generations of trauma how do they see the world then if they haven't been taught so and they can be taught but essentially at the same time can they it's, it's just there's a lot of questions there cannot be a one answer to this entirety because if we go back to mental health right and I'm going to use it again, having complex PTSD, brain fog happens at some moments, you know, and it's happened during the episodes where we've taken some of it out. But there was one episode where we left it in. Well, I'll have a moment where I'll forget everything because if I'm talking about something that is really creeping up and is about to trigger a certain part of me that wants to go into safety mode, protection mode, I'll completely lose my train of thought. I will completely lose every single thing that I've spoken about and what we're talking about in general. It just goes away in that moment. So advocating, right? If that is a consistent reality, if I'm in a certain space of mind where brain fog is in the entirety because I'm in self-protection mode, because I don't want to be triggered. I don't want to go through an episode. They are absolutely daunting and trying to get out of them is, especially by yourself, is incredibly difficult. It's beyond my um words right now but if i'm in the state of mind where brain fog is occurring and let's say someone's expecting me to advocate for something if my mind is not in that present state and if the memory of it is not if my thought process is not presently here but it's somewhere else in protection mode what do, what do i do then if we're going to advocate for mental health if we're going to have these conversations and you have to know that there is a deal with mental health conditions they cannot show up in certain ways at society that some people expect them to. So maybe the expectations have to be broken down. Maybe the realization that if you want mental health to be talked about a lot more, if you want mental health to come to the surface, then you have to realize that it unfolds in many different ways and how it unfolds. It's really important to learn that, especially when you're advocating with people, especially um, who you're advocating for. There's just, there's so many factors that have to be taken into account here. 
And that's sort of why I said before that I don't apologize to nobody because essentially any kind of, um, what's the word? Pressure? No, no, um, expectation. Any kind of expectations that people have, I'm telling you, break that down because your expectation is based on potentially a narrative when there's a whole field of different experiences. There's a whole range there. And this is kind of why I've said before in an episode to be very cautious sometimes of what you put out there. We've, I think we've spoken about it before, actually. Yeah, um, when we're talking about that Alpha Dom guy, and he sat there in his car and he said his little his little shamantish and then he got out of his car and he left and i said he has no idea where those words travel he has no idea because he doesn't see it he's not there in the homes of people that are watching it he doesn't know the psychology that he's feeding he has no idea no idea and that's the same with the expectations that society has you have no idea you think you do. And even I think I do sometimes. And then I learn and that's okay. I'm open to learning because it's unpredictable. This human experience, it's completely unpredictable, but the expectations that you have is just such a, it's a suppression of the actual reality in a lot of ways. So I think it's up to all of us, even those are advocating for gosh, the most. And like you said, Nina, there's, the heinousness out there is unreal sometimes it really is the capability of human beings yeah. is uh it just like i said it's just oh god yeah it has made me want to check out of reality many many times because i just sit there and i think it's just it's indescribable the limits that pe- the the um levels that people will go to and where their psychology is at and, and where it feels validated to make these kind of decisions and put other human beings in a certain, in harm's way, even just, oh my gosh, I can't. I recently came across something on TikTok about a 16 year old and I don't even know if I want to say it, but I just, my for you page comes up with some of this stuff, obviously. And I sit there and I just, I think human beings do this, human beings did this. You know, they did this to another human being. And if people are capable of that, yeah, this is, this is sort of why so many of these conversations are so needed because the, how deep this goes is, is beyond even my own comprehension at times. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, it's also important to remember who you're, who you're, fighting for what you're fighting for what your who your why is or what your why is and make sure that nothing gets in the way of the true intention of what it is you're trying to help out and if your behavior and how you're projecting or how you wish somebody else to show up is degating or deviating rather um that in which you're fighting for that in which you're trying to help you're actually turning more people off from being open enough to receive it if they don't have enough knowledge about certain things. And people say all the time, listen, you can educate yourself, you can Google, absolutely you can. Um, And it is important for us to educate ourselves, but again, you don't know who you're speaking to, not in the sense of they're a bad person, it's in the sense of you don't know what they are struggling with on a day-to-day basis, mm-hmm. mental health wise. So they may not show up in the same way that you do and still in a different way contribute to the cause. But to bully people into acting a certain way is not the way to go or to pressure people or anything like that. And to anybody out there who's like, well, there are people who have a thousand times worse than this. And I'm like, yeah, but do we want to contribute to the positivity? Do we want to contribute to the health? Do we want to contribute to the evolution from the negative to a healthier way of living for people to exist in a way that respects every life? Or do we want to be a part of the problem in how we're communicating with people? There is the number one thing I'm learning personally, I'm just going to make this short, is communication and the way you word things can make 
a completely different impact um, on who you're speaking to. And uh, it's, it's, it's so great for so many people to be passionate. It really is. And I'm so proud and I'm so glad to see so many people come together in this world right now and fight the good fight. But please be mindful of how you are bringing it across. And um, you can do it with the best intentions and the purest heart. And you want to see change and you're passionate about it. And yes, we need that. But you do not know how your words and how are you wording things um, can negatively impact your movement or what you're trying to achieve if it mm. is based out of just your perception of how it's supposed to happen or how it's supposed to be brought about, right? Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I've seen a lot of, you know, people be like, okay, I'm taking time off now from social media because I can't really do this right now. My, my mental health is breaking apart. Then you have other people who do remind each other, hey, take a moment for you today. Um, so the conversation is around, but we definitely wanted to bring it into this podcast because we are the daily humans. You know, we talk about our experience, our personal experience. We talk about what it is to suffer, what it is to evolve, what it is to go through things. And it is important that we also speak up about mental health issues in times of evolution and change and hopefully mm -hmm. progress. So yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. Yes. When you talk um, to someone. Yeah, go. No, sorry. sorry. No, 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 no. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say sort of what Nina said. When you conversate with someone about something and your intention is to bring advocacy to it, you could be talking to someone that easily shuts off because they are afraid of confrontation. They're afraid of becoming aware of how heinous this world actually is. And I don't actually blame them, to be honest. I don't actually blame them, even though the ignorance sometimes annoys me, definitely, 100% for some things. Oh, my geez. Right? But at the same time, I also get why some people just can't or don't want to acknowledge a lot of this stuff because it is a lot. It is a lot. On the news, I don't watch the news, but... um pops up on my TikTok now and then and then I <laughs> like I don't want to see you but I know that the news consistently portrays continuous negativity obviously and fabricates some shit but essentially just constantly being witness to knowing that this stuff is out there some people can't even mentally comprehend that that stuff like that exists you know, that that actually is happening around them. Some people cannot comprehend it, truly. Again, you're dealing with the mind, which, like I said three times now, I think, is incredibly powerful. The psychology of it, the way that it works, and we're all different, and we have no idea how the next person's psychology is working. We really don't. We really don't. So it's just important to take these things. I don't know if it's caught me. <laughs> it's important to take these things into account, not just for others, but for yourself as well, because it's learning about how you work and how you communicate and how you advocate and how you want to show up with also knowing that you don't need, like I said, you don't need to harm yourself in the process of showing up. And that should not be advocated for either. That should, no one should ever use that as like a pillar of where you should be in advocacy. Like this is where you should go. No, I rebuke in the full sense of it i rebuke yeah. even just the thought the thought that people have where they're like well there are people out there that are facing just the most atrocious experiences like you know and you have to do everything in your power it's about it's validating the atrocities but it will always be about boundaring it because people can't advocate if they're in certain states of mind it's very difficult to remain present like i've been like i said before it's difficult to remain present when you yourself are not grounded when you do not have a full cup you have filled yourself and i'm saying this again from experience stepping up and helping humanity in your way is difficult when you yourself are in a certain state in a certain environment in a certain place of mind it is incredibly difficult to do so. Yeah. So, see, I've just forgotten my train of thought. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's about advocating in a healthy way, and we're not putting anybody down. We're not putting down advocating in it in and of itself. I mean, we're here. Uh, we we are doing this. We're a part of it. Um, but again, just some um, ways that you can possibly check in with yourself today, tomorrow, whenever you have time. Meditation maybe talking to a friend or therapist, seeking somebody who you can truly open up to about what's going on, just sleeping. Sleeping can do wonders sometimes. <laughs> like sometimes all I want to do is sleep. <laughs> um, reading, <laughs> writing, going outside, taking a walk, whatever you can do, nourishing yourself, drinking water. These are all ways that you can show up for yourself uh, and taking a break from online. It's okay. You're not a terrible person, and I don't want anybody to feel like if they aren't 100% all the time, all day, every day, with whatever they're doing, this goes in any area of life, you are valid to take a break, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And um, and, uh, and, and regardless of where you're listening to this episode too, I also just want to say we do have a couple links listed in our description with GoFundMes if you would like to donate, but you do not have to. And uh, just know that you yourself working on your mental health is revolutionary, is advocacy, because your existence, no matter who you are, if you're yearning for a better life for yourself, for others, if you're embodying what it means to be a healthy person and, and continuing to strive towards that, no matter what that looks like for you, that is you being an act of revolution against the powers that may be. And it's important to remember that and to remind yourself of that. You're one person. We can all do a lot of change. We can all bring about a lot of change, but it should not come at the expense of your mental health. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I always agree with what you say because you say right. <laughs> yes. With that having been said, do you want to do a dance party? What song are we playing today? <laughs> we need to break up the heaviness with some with some like uplifting thing. <laughs> well, we we said that. Um, essentially, though, I just have to say it too. Yeah. Um, I don't even. I don't even feel like associating a lot of these conversations with heaviness actually fully makes sense mm -hmm. only because I think it's just a part of the daily life yeah of yeah human beings so it's just we dance anyway just to break up I think the the topics that might be difficult yeah for ourselves and others as well so dance over but I don't know what song to dance to everybody <laughs> dance now Duh. Everybody dance You know what just popped into my head, but it's not actually. Yeah. So when you do watch it for Bridget in season three, they did a um, violin version of Pitbull's song. Um, what was it? <laughs> they just did a violin version of one of Pitbull's songs. And when I heard it, I was like, I'm not going to lie. I, I, there's another song that I would have picked over that, but essentially it's, it's kind of a bop. Oh, okay. Give me everything tonight. That song, Give Me Everything. Give me everything tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I might drink a little more than I should. I might make it to me if I should tonight. Baby, I'm gonna make you feel so good tonight because we might not get tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thank you for joining us on this episode. Um, and yeah, all of our episodes, yeah, I gotta eat, or girls gotta eat, and Ashley's gotta sleep. So, Ooh. we're out. Nina's gotta eat. Ashley's got to sleep. Nina's got to eat and Ashley's got to sleep. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, thank you for fighting the good fight. Thank you for being who you are and doing what you do. Even if today, I said this in like a previous thing before, if all you could do today was get up and get out of bed, that is enough. 
and uh, you are amazing. You are worthy. You deserve the best this world has to offer, no matter who you are. And uh, with that, I bid you adieu. Good night. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Have the day you desire. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Bye bye. Toodles.